YouTube, it's Missy, and today I'm here to share with you guys uh, my most anticipated reads recap, rewrap, and update for February 2015. I am on the 2015. So let's get started. Uh, the first one I want to talk about that is on my list, and by the way, I wanted to read 12 books in February. 12 books came out in February that I was interested in reading. And the first one I wanted to read was Shudder by Courtney Alameda. I've talked about this book several times on my channel. I got this from NetGalley back before it even came out and I loved it so much that as soon as it did come out that February I purchased the physical copy. It is an amazing YA paranormal um, mystery type of book. You have our main character who can capture ghosts within her camera and only she can do it because she's got certain eyes that can see ghosts. It's not the camera itself that can capture the ghost. Her, she's the only one who can visually see ghosts and with her camera she's able to collect their like essence and then she traps them in mirrors to keep them from harming uh, the world you know so she comes from a line of monster hunters um, dating back to Dracula she is a descendant of uh, oh what's it called I always always forget Helsing she is the descendant of Helsing Van Helsing and with her um, there's another family from Dracula. Again, I keep forgetting the other family's name. But both of those families fight, and they've been fighting for generations to control the supernatural so that way they don't affect uh, humans. And I really enjoyed this book. It was such a fast-paced read, and I read this entirely on my phone, which is unheard of. So you know the book is good if I read it on my dinky phone. Like, I didn't even have an iPhone back then. It was, like, the first uh, phone I had, smartphone that I had, and I was like, when I just read it all on the phone. It was crazy. Anyways, I really enjoyed it. Five stars. I would highly recommend picking it up. All right, the next book on my list, which, let me move over, is here, and it's called Beast Keeper, and this is by Cat. Helixson. It's a YA fantasy. These will all be YA. I didn't have adult books on my most anticipated reads until I think 2017. Um, anyways, so this is going to be, it's more of like a middle grade, but it's a retelling of uh, Beauty and the Beast. So I gave this, what did I give this? Four stars. I gave it four stars. So what we have is we have a, a little girl who I think her parents die. Is that what happens? I read, again, I read this book in 2015. <laughs> that was three years ago. Okay, so I think her parents die and she's sent to live with her grandma. Oh, no, her mom's not alive anymore. Her dad sends her and drops her off with her grandma. Now, the girl doesn't really like her grandma because the grandma is very cold and um, kind of combative. Like, she doesn't let her do anything, and the girl just wants to escape. So she runs off into the woods all the time for, like, release, like, you know, to get away from her grandma. And one day she comes upon, uh, I got I want to say a little boy, I think, maybe, um, and he tells her the story of her, like, family's past. And then she goes to find out all about it. And like I said, it's a retelling of Beauty and the Beast. So the girl is a descendant of the Beast, I think. And no one tells her anything. And it's, like, it's something that's hereditary. So at a certain age, I believe, she will automatically turn into a Beast, regardless if she's male or female, and um, I really enjoyed the story. It was a lot shorter than I expected, and I was kind of wanting more, and that's why I gave it a four star, but it wasn't bad for a retelling. And like I said, it's like a middle grade YA. I think the girl's like 12 or 13, not, not really old. So yeah, if you like retellings, I would definitely pick it up. 
The next book I have here is called The Forgetting, and this is by Nicole Maggie. It's about a girl who, her name's Georgie, and she needs a heart transplant, and so she gets one, and when she wakes up, she has these weird feelings for, like, things that she craves like say like strawberries she wakes up and she really wants strawberries but she's allergic she's always been allergic and other things start happening where she has this like need or urge for things that are not her so it's like the heart is taking over her body the the person who owned the heart before her is taking over if that makes sense um this is a romance mystery so i wonder if she like ends up finding the heart's mate and then falls in love with that boy i don't know <laughs> but i'm not interested in this book anymore uh it seems like it would have been good years ago when i first started reading like YA romance i don't know if i want to read it anymore it seems just a little cheesy with the whole like the heart will go on kind of thing. Uh, but let me know if this sounds interesting to you or if you have read it. Maybe you can convince me to change my mind. The next book on the list is Inherit Midnight. I really enjoyed this. Um, I was hoping for a sequel for some reason, but nothing ever happened um, with that. It's from Kate K. Myers. It's a mystery thriller, and I gave it four stars. I think. Yeah, I gave it four stars. Okay, so basically what this is, is that it's about a family who are pining for the grandmother to die so that they can inherit her fortune. Now she has, God, I can't remember how many grandkids, but so she's, she has this test for them. I think she's got cancer and she's like on her deathbed. And so she gives like them like a scavenger hunt kind of thing where it's timed they have so many days to complete this like quest that they have to do and uh the grandma wants them to kind of work together but on the on the other hand she wants a certain family to win because she knows that that family is more pure in heart than the others the others are like bad apples and she's really rooting for the one that will do good with her money. Um, and isn't this the case with all families? There are those that are money grubbers who want riches to, you know, help themselves, to better themselves. And then there's those, um, the nice ones in the family who would use that money for good. And uh, so anyways, it is, there. it's a race to inherit her fortune. And I found it very, very good. Um, Again, it's fast-paced because it's a race. Um, I liked the way the family members kind of bickered back and forth. It just it seemed like totally something that would happen and realistic. And I enjoyed the ending. Uh, it was really good. It, it had like a little twist to it. I wasn't expecting it. And so, uh, God, my nose is so itchy. Um, yeah, so I really enjoyed it. If you like singletons, if you want to read a standalone uh, mystery thriller, about families and like a scavenger hunt, I would pick this one up. All right, the next book I wanna talk about is called The Shadow Cabinet. And this is by Maureen Johnson. This is part of her Name of the Star. Shoot, maybe her, I, no, I think the series is called The Shadow Cabinet. The Name of the Star is the first book in the series. When I read this book, the Shadow Cabinet. I thought that that was the last book of the series and I was very excited to be done with the series. Not because I don't like the writing. I loved the story. I just, you know, at some point you want the series to end. And no, uh, The Shadow Cabinet, there's a twist in it that is now setting up for more books in the series. So that was a little unfortunate. Uh, but let me talk about the first book in case you have never heard of this series. So in the first book it's kind of like a Jack the Ripper mystery thriller. We have a girl who sounds exactly like um, Sookie Stackhouse 
from the you know True Blood uh, series. Um, so we have a girl from Louisiana. In my mind, she sounded just like Sookie. She moves to uh, England and she's staying at a boarding school while her parents are working. I can't remember what the parents do, but the parents live a little bit out of town. She lives in the heart of London, I think. And um, there's been a bunch of killings lately. And everybody believes that it's a Jack the Ripper, like, copycat. And um, there is a, like, a secret ghost, um, like, division of the police force. And they have this kind of device, kind of like the Ghostbusters, where they can zap the ghost into this device. It's kind of the same thing. It looks like a cell phone. And they can touch the ghost, and it, like, makes the ghost explode or evaporate, and then the ghost can no longer harm people around them. And the girl gets involved in this whole... Um, secretive police force that deals with ghosts. I thought it was fascinating. I absolutely loved the first book. And again, it had that reminiscence of Jack the Ripper because uh, the ghost kind of, I don't think the ghost was Jack the Ripper. I think he was a copycat, but he was trying to be like Jack the Ripper. I think that's what it was. Um, anyways, it, it goes on for three books. The girl's still trying to figure out where she fits in. Um, the parents get involved because, you know, weird things keep happening around her but also there are people that are trying to hurt her because she's able to um feel the ghosts without the cell phone like that's that's what's um different about her and the the ghost police are like hey we need to you need to work for us forget about this boarding school this is legit like we need extra hands and you will be perfect um so yeah if you like ghost stories and if you like murder mysteries and you like the secret kind of uh police force uh definitely pick up this series it was a lot of fun and again it's not over the shadow cabinet is another secret section of the police force that i'm interested in continuing on with the series i want to know why this police force ended up being made and you know what happens next so there's that all right the next book that i want to talk about is called utopia iowa this is by brian yansky and this is a humor book about a whole town in iowa called utopia and anything goes in that town it's kind of like uh it's not like <laughs> It's not like cloudy with a chance of meatballs, but kind of. I mean, it's it's this magical town where if you want something, it happens. If you wish for something, it can happen. If uh, there's ghosts and supernatural stuff and, like, there's vampires, I think, and there's, like, a, a lady who can read fortunes and those fortu fortunes definitely come true and fortune cookies all of those fortunes come true um it sounds like a lot of fun and i'm still very interested in reading it i don't think my library carries this book which is a bummer and i think i've seen it on book outlet i even think i have it in my cart i'll have to double check but i definitely want to still read that book and if you've read it down below or if you've read it let me know down below what you thought if it's as funny as it sounds all right the next book that i have here is called when reason breaks and this is by sydney rodriguez i am not interested in reading this book anymore it's kind of um overdone i've read a bunch of these books now but it's about two girls that are from different sides of the track you know there's a girl who has to deal with a like a combative um anger management kind of thing and then you have this other girl who's very depressed um she attempts to kill herself in the book and the two girls are connected because they both have the same english class and through emily dickinson poetry they're able to overcome their obstacles and love life again and I it says the blurb says it's 13 reasons why meets Emily Dickinson poetry so I don't know if it's written in verse I don't think it is but I'm just not interested in it anymore 
let me know down below if you have read it. All right, the next book is Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. I don't know why I added this to my list in 2015. I was more gung-ho, I think, about fantasy back then. I am absolutely not interested in reading this anymore. I just don't want to read, like, hardcore fantasy. I don't want to read it. Um, if it's like Game of Thrones where there's a lot of killing and um, political kinds of things, maybe, but... This just seems, I don't know. I mean, people talked about it for years here on BookTube. I just, I don't, I don't want to read it. Uh, but it's about a fan, it's a fantasy dystopian. And, um, yeah, I just, I don't want to read it. The next book on my list that I also own, I'm excited to read it, and that is The Bargaining. Uh, this is by Carly Ann West. I also own the Murmuring by her. I think The Murmuring came out first. Well, that's why it's here on the flap. And then this one came out second. This is a psychological horror thriller. That's all I needed to know. And yeah, I'm still looking forward to reading it. I don't know anything about the book besides that. I mean, it's got, it's pretty ugly, if you ask me. Um, but it says here, it says, a deep exhale, grumbling slow, let me start over. A deep exhale, grumbling so low, at first I think it's thunder, but then the lowest register of a voice utters two words at the tail of that breath, you're it. That's what it says on the back. It sounds pretty creepy. Um, I can't wait to read it. Yes, 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 all the way. All right, then we have, we have three more books left that I want to talk about. The first one is called Haunted by Lynn Carthridge. Yeah, and it's a ghost paranormal book. I think, isn't all paranormal have ghosts in it? Maybe not. I get confused with paranormal and supernatural because supernatural has vampires and like werewolves and stuff, correct? And then paranormal would just be like ghosts and um, oh, maybe paranormal is demonic possession and all that stuff too. Regardless, um, I am still looking forward to reading this book. I don't own it. Here is the picture. Um, it's about a family that is from San Francisco, and they move to an English manor that is owned by the father's family. Um, I'm not sure why they are there, but after they've moved in, a lot of like haunting kind of things happen, and it's predominantly... Um, pointed at the little sister. So our main character has to deal with these hauntings and protect her little sister. And that makes me excited. I want to read it. Anything that has to do with ghosts and like English, like England and I don't know. I have a thing for the UK. I just, I love everything about it. And um, I think it's the history. <laughs> everything is haunted over there. I can't wait to read this book. All right, the next two books I am not interested in anymore, so I'm going to quickly go over them. We have Cypher by John Ford. This is a cyber thriller. I don't even know why I added this to my list back in 2015. Um, I think it's because I, re I watched a movie with Sandra Bullock, and I really enjoyed it, and I can't remember what it's called right now. Let me know down below if you know what I'm talking about. I'll also I'll leave a picture right here. Uh, of what the movie is but basically she works in computers she's able to find hackers and she deals with like this computer theft like not theft but like a hacking kind of thing so in this book in this cyber thriller um it's talking about cracking codes and kind of like a big brother kind of thing where people are watching and taking codes out of like atms and other people's uh like credit cards and everything and I'm just like I'm just not interested in like cyber science but <laughs> I don't want to read this um, and then the very last book is called A Wicked Thing and that is by Rayon Rhiannon Rhiannon Thomas am I saying her name totally wrong I don't know it's a it's a sleeping beauty retelling and um, I was, I have this on my Kindle. I think I bought it for like 99 cents. I was really looking forward to reading it. And then if you go through like all of the Goodreads comments, especially like all of the people who are my friends on Goodreads, it's like one, two stars, three stars. There's no like 
five star praise on this book and so I'm just I'm I don't want to read it anymore I mean I like retellings and I told you uh, in a past video that I'm slowly starting to um, have retellings like in the back seat of of my want to read list I like fairy tale retellings but I've read so many in the past that I'm kind of like putting them aside for a little while and this just doesn't it doesn't make it sound good if a lot of my friends are going ew this is such a weird and yucky book I don't want to read it. <laughs> let me know down below if you liked it and what you liked about the book and that is it those are the 12 stop hitting the pictures that were the 12 books that I was interested in reading in uh February 2015 let me know if you like the extra words in these videos and what I can do to improve this series um because I do like reminiscing through the books that I've read and unread and whether or not these are something that I can get now on book outlet or on Amazon because it's been years so these should be like at cheaper prices than when they first came out am I making any sense I hope so Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week, and I will talk to you soon.